Hey, it's Fan Mail Friday, and you had a lot of questions about, guess who? Shohei Otani. And so we're going to answer all of those questions today. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click that bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by Sleeper. You can swing for the fences on Sleeper Picks, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app right now and use our promo code Locked On, and you'll get up to $100, a match of $100 on your first deposit. It. There are some terms and conditions that do apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details, currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, Lockdown Everydayers, don't forget the Angels are out in Queens. They're playing the Mets, and they are going to be doing a free game set starting tonight. It goes through the weekend, and we're going to be recapping that entire weekend series on Monday, so we hope you'll join us for that. On today's show, like Mike mentioned at the top, lots of questions about Shohei Otani, and a lot of them were kind of the same questions, Mike, and so we kind of compressed them all into, you know, representative questions, if you will, just so that we could get to everybody's questions. Uh, But first, Mike, there was uh, somebody pointed this out to us on YouTube. It was uh, at Yukon Goldie on YouTube and in our comments. Yukon Goldie, thank you for bringing this video to our attention. He said, need to watch Ben Verlander go off on the Angels. He's completely right about the Angels. So we watched it and listened to what Ben had to say. Obviously, uh, Ben's a huge uh, Otani fan. He's the younger brother of, of, uh, of Justin Verlander. And he's got the show Flippin' Bats with former Angel sideline reporter Alex Curry. They do a podcast together. Yep. And he had a lot of things to say. Um, Mike, I think the biggest takeaway here was that uh, he put a lot of the blame on the Angels milking Shohei, driving yeah. Shohei into the ground, and saying yeah. all of these things. So having watched that, why don't you uh, give us your response to, to what you saw? Yeah, uh, what I got, my first takeaway was that uh, obviously Ben Verlander is an Otani fan. He's not an Angel fan. He's an Otani fan, sure. and so There's he's a lot grieving. Of like that, <laughs> he's grieving the loss of Otani, which has every right to grieve that loss. I think a couple of responses to what Ben Verlander had to say, and he has every right to say what he said, and I think that his opinion was strong, and I appreciate that he came strong. I think a villain makes a really good story, right? And Mm. and I think that it's easy to make the Angels the villain here. And Mm. quite honestly... I'm a longtime Angel fan, Johnny. So are you. And, it, and and the Angels deserve to be the villain in a lot of these stories, right? Sure. There's a lot to point out uh, when it comes to the Angels. There's a lot to be upset about when it comes to the Angels. But I think in this instance, it might be a bit of a stretch. This isn't one of those times, Mike. There are plenty of things to be critical about the Angels, whether it's Artie Marino or the the stuff that's happened on their dealings and their hands. Yeah. Uh, the the busts of free agents that they there there's plenty to criticize right about this team and i don't think this is one of them so no i don't I, think that we need to get it twisted here i agree with you and and here's here's a couple reasons why first of all he said the team should have been responsible for telling otani what to do and what not to do but the very reason why shohei signed with the angels johnny is because they weren't going to do that he was mm. he was coming to this team and all indications are he came to the Angels because they were the only ones that said we're going to let you be Shohei let Shohei be Shohei and even when it happened back in 2018 when he hurt his UCL the first time despite all of the limitations that the Angels put on him to prevent the injury not hitting b- before he was going to pitch and then not not hitting while he's pitching all of those things mm-hmm. Otani still got injured yeah. And so they had limitations back then and they've learned as they've been on the same, you know, kind of rhythm and on the same team and in the same org, they've learned that they're going to do more of what Shohei wants to do because that's what's best for Shohei. And I think that he's proven that in the last two and a half years, the last really three years. And here's an example that somebody actually tweeted at us. DeGrom injured his UCL despite not pitching a full season in the last two or three years. Right. right. So like right. these things are going, these things are going to happen. Alex Curry said that there needs to be some checks and balances in place. 
it seems like there was. And yeah. they actually moved some pieces around because, again, Shohei Otani wants to be who he is. Yeah. And the Angels, How about that six-man rotation? That sounds like right. a checks and balance. <laughs> right. And, 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 and all indications are that the Angels were constantly listening to him. And, and even Perry said, like, there's trust in the last three years between him and Shohei. And right. they wanted to do what he wanted to do. And I get that sometimes you need to say, hey, bro, you need to take a day off. Hey, man, you need to take a step back. But what we've learned with Shohei is that when he is constantly in the rhythm that he's in, it's actually really beneficial for his body. And yeah. even when he had fatigue in the arm, even when he felt some numbness, like they had him skip a start and all of those things. But the reality was that Shohei kept saying, I want to be in there. I want to hit. And the angels are going to do what Shohei wants to do. And, and then Ben said, well, that's because they were milking Shohei. But quite honestly, John, m milking Shohei and, and putting him out there like, like, playing your best player isn't milking him, right? <laughs> right? Like he gave the angels the best chance to win when he's on the field and when he's pitching. And the reason why they kept putting him back out there is because one, he wanted to go back out there, but two, they were in the middle of this pennant race and they were trying mm -hmm. to get to the playoffs. I know it didn't work out, but that's why they did that. And quite frankly, like that's not, that's not milking Shohei. That's putting him out there because he is the best player in the universe, mm -hmm. let alone the best player on this team. And I get that baseball fans are upset and I get that Ben Ver Ver Ben Verlander is upset, but here, here's the reality. And, and, and this is just coming from a longtime angel fan. I, a lot of these fans didn't know Shohei existed until you thought that there was a potential for him to join your team at the end of this year. Yeah. Until he started doing what he's doing with no restrictions and what everybody is saying caused him to tear his UCL. He's been doing this for three years and you wouldn't have said boo if he hadn't been the superstar that he's yeah. been. Yeah. And, and now everybody's upset and it's like, well, this is what he's been doing. This is yeah. why you know of Shohei Otani. This right. is why you're excited about Shohei Otani. And I don't think Shohei would have been able to do what he did the last three years if he wasn't on the Angels right. because all indications from the media, from other teams, and from fans from other teams, and from organizations is that they weren't going to allow him to do that. In fact, it was the Dodger fans and the New York Yankee fans that actually said that, hey, man, we dodged a bullet. In fact, there right. was somebody who wrote – on behalf of the Dodgers and said, man, they really dodged a bullet when Shohei was really struggling in spring training. And or then the, the segment, the, uh, Mad Dog and the other guy yeah, from New York. I was just going to mention them too. Yeah. The Dodger, the, Dodger, the Yankees really, really missed a, <laughs> a problem there. Yeah. Right. And so, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like we probably would have not seen, and I know we can speculate cause we don't know, but we probably would have not seen Shohei as he is right now, if he was on another team. And so to say that the angels messed this up and broke him, no, the angels allowed us to see who Shohei has the potential to be right. and Shohei proved it and he flexed on it and he he's incredible. And I, he also said that Shohei shouldn't play the rest of the year. We got word from Rhett Bollinger that Shohei is going to DH until they decide what they're going to do with his elbow. But Again, going back to 2018, when he was diagnosed with a torn UCL in June of his rookie year, he took a month off and then he came back and his slash line was 283, 354, 580. <laughs> he had 16 home runs and and he did that in 70 games, Johnny. Yeah. Shohei is just a different type of player. He's a different type of human. And these comments were made with other players in mind not with Shohei in mind like mm -hmm. you're thinking about Mike Trout or you're thinking about Derek Jeter or you're thinking about Aaron Judge right like Shohei Otani is just above and beyond any other player in baseball and he has proven that he can do both hitting and pitching at a very high level and what we really have learned as Angel fans is Shohei loves playing the game and yeah. I know people hate this but he loves this team and he loves these players and yeah. Ben Verlander fed into the narrative something that you brought up on this pod a couple of days ago, he fed into the narrative that it's the angels versus Otani. Like right. Otani is shaking his nose at the entire organization and these players. Cause they're not carrying their weight. I'm sure he's frustrated, but every time he's been interviewed, he said, I got to do better. I got to perform better. And you know, this, and I know this when we're working with people or we're playing with people on a team, you, you have, an, you're endeared to them and, and yeah. Shohei loves these guys. And so yeah. this narrative outside of the org that Shohei's pissed and he's not coming back and all of those things, it's just our narrative. I know we were called delusional to think that he was going to come back. I'll be delusional. That's fine. And, and yeah. I'm not pandering to the crowd that's watching this either. I really am convinced before this injury that the Angels had a really great opportunity to bring him back. The reason why some of the fans don't think that are one, they're probably not Angel fans. 
But two, they just are, are filtering everything through their mind. They're telling us what they would do. But the reality is, is what you see every single day, and we have the privilege of watching this team every single day, what we see is that there's powerful relationships here. And the fact that Shohei was able to be Shohei is just another indication that the Angels have been the best organization for him in the last six years. Let me talk to <clears throat> let me talk to Ben Verlander. Let me talk to you. <laughs> let me talk to you. Uh, ben, bandwagon Ben, I know that you got really hyped up on Shohei Otani during his first MVP season. You're a big part, my friend, for why a lot of people were recognizing Otani for what he was able to do in 21. And, and you were a big part of that. But here's the thing, my friend. You want to say the Angels are milking and running him into the ground? You have no room to talk when your whole podcast career and your whole personality are because you've milked everything that Shohei Otani does. Adam Rank, who covers the NFL, said, you know, I, I he tweeted out and it was hilarious. He said, I'm sure everybody who posts uh, every single thing that Shohei Otani does when he stands up, sits down, breathes and eats. I'm sure they put pressure on Otani to perform just like the Angels did. And that's exactly the kind of school that you've come from, Ben Verlander. Here's the thing. Where were you, I've said this before, mm -hmm. where were you in 2018 when everybody doubted Shohei Otani? Yeah. Where were you when he had to have Tommy John surgery and couldn't pitch the remainder of 2018 all through 2019 and then was terrible pitching in 2020 that he only pitched an inning and in, in two thirds? Where were you, Ben? You weren't there because your bandwagon, Ben Nerd, <laughs> Nerd Verlander, <laughs> Nerdlander, Verlander, your bandwagon, Ben. <laughs> And the thing is, is you haven't been there since the beginning like Angel fans have and like the Angels organization have. So talk about it all you want. You're just upset that your meal ticket got hurt and your entire personality comes crumbling down because Shohei Otani got hurt. And guess what? Shohei doesn't think about you, bro. Shohei's going to keep going out there and playing the game that he loves so you can be upset and be hurt all that you want. But he doesn't care about you and he doesn't think about you. And, and, and for clarity, because I know that often non-Angel fans, as they might check out Locked on Angels, will only listen to portions of this. So I just want to say this one more time. We're not defending the organization for everything that they've done. I think just in this particular instance, they've done the right thing by Shohei by listening to Shohei and letting him be Shohei. Right. And, and so I don't think that they deserve this spear. I am not defending Artie. I hope he sells no. the team. I'm not defending right. Rondon. Bye, I hope he retires. I'm not like I ho all of that. stuff. I'm not defending that. I'm frustrated with that like all the other fans are but that's the difference between an angel fan and a baseball fan in this situation angel fans you guys have watched Shohei Otani be Shohei Otani right. through the ups and downs and so to make comments about I can't believe the organization I bet you Shohei wouldn't say that right but honestly Shohei I don't think would say that at all not just because he's a gentleman I think that it's not a reality and I don't think he would say that at all about this organization we wouldn't be here if things didn't go down the way that they did and unfortunately there was an injury so quit playing the game, the the blame game here, and and that goes for Mr. Verlander as well. Hey, the Angels are back at it with Shohei Otani with the team traveling to play the Mets at four ten Pacific time tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on SiriusXM with the SXM app. All you got to do is search Angels. And coming up on Locked On Angels, have a, has a pitcher ever had two Tommy John surgeries? and come back and been successful? Well, we've got some examples that we're going to share. I think it's an important question to ask. We'll talk about that coming right up. Hey, today's show is brought to you by Sleeper. We've been talking about Sleeper the last few weeks and months, and you can swing for the fence on this app and win up to 100 times your money. Here's how it works. You just pick two players that you really like. You can go two or more if you like, and then you decide if they're going to overperform or underperform on the stat categories that are listed. So if there's home runs listed or strikeouts or hits, you can decide if they're going to overperform or underperform. And if you get your picks right, you can actually win big. Sleeper works really quickly too. You can make your entries in 30 seconds or less. And there is a safe and fast withdrawal on all deposits. And you can download the Sleeper app today. And when you do, use our promo code, you're welcome, Locked on at sign up, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. You should download the Sleeper app today. Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Hey, Lockdown Everydayers, don't forget that we're going to be recapping the entire weekend series against the Mets on Monday. We'd be happy for you to come back and join us and find out how that series goes and, and see what happens with Otani and watching the young guys like, like Shanuel and Ohapi and 
be excited about those guys. Uh, the, they're playing the Mets tonight, 410 Pacific time. Of course, you can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. John, if they're playing the Mets and the Mets aren't good, I think it gives us an opportunity maybe to win a freaking series finally. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. Outside of all of this Otani we'll find talk. find a way, Michael. <laughs> I'm, Johnny, honestly, outside of this Otani talk, like the, we've we've – it's almost like a distraction from the reality that we're just we, we're struggling, right? And, yeah, and that this bad. season has been really a, a a disappointment. I know that Otani and him getting hurt is adding to that disappointment, but it kind of has been a good bad distraction, right? Like because we have we have Otani to talk about, we can talk about how much we enjoy him and how heartbreaking it is. But then on the reality hits and like, oh yeah, there's a weekend series. Oh yeah, we gotta maybe, watch maybe we have a chance again. to win, right? <laughs> Mike, there was a couple of questions about Otani's like on-field future. Why yeah. don't you read those for us? Yeah, Ethan Dupree on Instagram had this question. Does Shohei have a future as an outfielder if he decides not to pitch eventually? Johnny, what do you think? Would you put Shohei in the outfield, or is there a better position for him? Or do you think dude's going to come back and be a pitcher again? He did it once. He can do it twice. Well, I don't have any doubt that he's going to come back and be a pitcher. In fact, we'll get into, you know, can he be a starting pitcher again and and actually start on the mound again after he will likely have another Tommy John surgery. I know that they're still kind of figuring out if that's the the plan as of this recording, but um, as an outfielder, I know that he's done it before Mike, but you know, what's funny is I look at um, I look at Ellie De La Cruz and how he's just as tall as Shohei Otani and he's out there diving and playing shortstop. Now maybe, maybe shortstop is a little bit, beyond Otani not that I don't think that he could do it or couldn't do it but yeah, there's probably nothing beyond Otani right <laughs> there's nothing beyond Otani I just think that like that's going to be the most wear and tear yeah. um you you think about maybe yeah corner outfield spot you think about mm. uh, first base I think could be a possibility as well just because I know as guys get older that they usually end up in that in that spot at first base or left field. Yeah. Um, yeah. The reality is, I mean, he's fast. He's played the outfield before. If he if he absolutely needed to make the change, Mike, right. I think that he would succeed at any position on the field. Maybe not catcher. He'd be a really tall catcher. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah. uh, I, I have to think that first base would be an option and probably left field would be a great option. It's just funny to think about him running around out there. Right. Um, we haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's in 2021. We got to see it, but he never actually had the ball hit to right. him when, right. cause that was before the Otani rule. It just, it just and felt so, like, yeah, it just kind of felt like, Hey, just stand there. <laughs> and yeah. Hopefully, you know, hopefully yeah. nobody gets the ball to you. Right. <laughs> I know what that's like. I know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Johnny Elaine Bennis told Keith Hernandez that the worst player plays first base. And so <laughs> I, I think, I think if you're going to pick a position for him, I think it's probably going to be first base um, simply because outfield, you got to run around. And, and I think with, with Otani, I, you probably have to kind of work him into that. Although, he's he's the modern era version of bo jackson like he's just an right. incredible athlete and is able to do a lot of really incredible things johnny there's a question from it's travis beal on instagram and he said would you like to see otani move to the closer role now there was a conversation uh like when he hurt himself the first time and all of the smart intelligent baseball people like buster Olney said oh he's not ever going to be able to do both and so he needs to be a relief pitcher and then they were wrong Imagine that. And then in the, the WBC, we actually saw Shohei come out of the bullpen yeah. and win it for them, striking out Mike Trout. But, Johnny, what do you think? Do you think that maybe the closer role would actually be a better place for him when he does come back as a pitcher? Again, I think that I think he's going to be able to come back and start. But if he were to need to make a change, kind of like what we were talking about with positions – I think the closer role is a great spot for him. He's got mm. swing and miss stuff. He's got hard throwing stuff. It's one inning. And so it's it's a whole different environment than than starting a game. Now, I will say, historically, Shohei's first innings uh, right. of the game yeah. are usually a struggle. There's yeah. some walks. There's some hits. Usually he gets around it. Usually right. he dances around it. He and knows walks, how to do that. He walks the tightrope. But, you know, guys get on. There's walks. There's couple of hits john has there ever been a closer with with 
the plethora of pitches that show like five pitches yeah he's I mean, got like, the, the fastball the splitter yeah. the slider the sweeper all that stuff yeah yeah i mean <laughs> like he could come in and really be deceptive um and and he's somebody who can turn it on when necessary and this might be a stupid question i know we're, we're baseball guys but the so if they brought him in as the closer, it wouldn't affect him at, at, in the DH position, according to how the rules are set up right now. Yeah. You know, I was, <laughs> I was talking about that with uh, Steve Brunato who used to host the show and and now he's uh, producing over at locked on Yankees. We were talking about this. I was like, can he go from a hitting spot yeah. to a, a, a roll out of the bullpen in the same game? And, and Steve just said, no, nah, they'll make it a rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, when you're that good, might as well make it a rule. Right. But yeah, I think it might exactly. be interesting to see him come in and actually do that. Obviously the, the priority is going to be being a starter and, and then that's what he wants to focus on. But I think if you want to continue to have him as a pitcher, the closer role does, it does make sense. Right. Yeah. I think that he would be, he would, he would succeed at it at the end of the day. I think that he would do a really good job. So if, if, if again, I I am confident that he's going to be able to come back and continue doing what he's doing. But Otani as a closer, I don't think it would be a bad idea if he had to pivot on his career. All right, so uh, we're in the middle of Fan Mail Friday, and it's really just a uh, Fan Mail Friday about Otani, right? And so, um, Johnny, we have a a voicemail that was left for us, and uh, from from Balaam in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. He asked us, uh, I can't remember the last time a pitcher has come back and was really dominant after a second Tommy John surgery. So, mm. given Shohei Otani's status as a two way player, what are the odds that he can't come back as a starting pitcher? Mike, Great question. We've got a couple of uh, examples here. Uh, players who have had two Tommy John surgeries in their careers. Uh, do you remember Chris Capuano? Remember that I re- guy? I do remember him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had two Tommy John surgeries and he had seven more seasons after his second Tommy John surgery. Wow. Here's one that everybody knows. Nathan Eovaldi, before yep. he made it to the majors, had one in 2007. He also had one in 2016. Yeah, I'd say he's recovered pretty well. I know that he's dealing with some issues right now, but I'd say that uh, he yeah. was able to re- come back from that. I right? wonder what he had some forearm tightness. And so I think that they were concerned that maybe something's mm-hmm. going on with him again. But uh, he's had a pretty successful season this year with the, with the Rangers. Uh, Jamison Tyon, who's with the Cubs right now, he's had two Tommy John surgeries. And, and so far he is doing quite well. He's doing OK for himself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Joachim Soria, remember that guy? <laughs> yep, I remember him. Yeah, April two thousand three is when he had his first Tommy John, but he did start his major league career in two thousand and seven, um, and then he had it again in twenty twelve, and he pitched until twenty twenty one. Mike, the difference there is that he was a reliever, yeah, and so he wasn't putting as much mileage on his arm. Another one, Mike, um, Joe Nathan. Uh, great mm-hmm. reliever, great closer for the twins. He did have yep. a a second. Uh, he did have a second Tommy John, and he was kind of done shortly thereafter. But yeah. it was also it was after a long career. I he think was that, old too. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I remember, like I think it was with the Giants. He was he was kind of pushing the the high thirties, getting into the forties, and so right. He was kind of at the tail end of his career anyway. But he had a really successful career, and and was somebody that did come back after two Tommy John surgeries. And so to answer Balin from Phoenix, to answer your question, Balin, um, there, there's just some names current and, you know, maybe last 20 years or so who have had two Tommy John surgeries and have been able to come back. And even the guys from like 20 years ago being able to do that um, in the last 15, 20 years, I mean, met <laughs> all the <laughs> the processes, I'm sure the 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 medical side of things have improved greatly in right. that amount of time. In fact, right. Mike, uh, we, you and I have a friend who's in the, uh, the Marlins minor league system who also had to have Tommy John surgery. Mm-hmm. And when I checked in on him at the beginning of this season, he was, he was getting ready to pitch. And I wow. said, Hey bro, like, how did you, how did that happen? He goes, well, it's, it all depends on the severity of the tear. And he goes, I, I lucked out. Mine was not as severe as what, a lot of pit people expect when a pitcher mm. needs Tommy John surgery. So um, that is also kind of a, a takeaway here is, is Shohei Otani's tear as bad as it was before or yeah. something that's going to be uh, 
requiring as much time as it did before, that's that's up in the air as well. But Mike, I think there's one example that we need to watch here. Who do you got for us? Walker Bueller. He's, he's yeah. pitching for the Dodgers and he's a young guy and he's up for his second Tommy John. Had it. And now they're just waiting for him to return. And the Dodgers are always really great with their pitchers. And so I think they're going to handle it really well and, and, and bring him back slowly. I think that he's somebody that we could pay attention to, to see how he recovers. He's, he's younger though than, than Shohei and, and the likelihood of Shohei pitching again will probably be when he's probably in his age 30 season. He's 28 mm-hmm. right now. And so mm-hmm. that's the difference I think between a Walker Bueller and a Shohei is they're just younger. And as you get older, we all know, like you, you, you slow down a little bit, you don't heal as quickly, but Walker Bueller, I think could be a, a, a great example of somebody that we could pay attention to, to see how he comes back and, and all indications are he'll come back and he'll be really strong. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, he's he's 29, actually. So oh, he is 29. He's okay. A, he's got a year on... Uh, I know it feels like he's been like early 20s, mid-20s. It does his, his feel like life. he's young, so I, <laughs> I, I stand corrected. Yeah, so he's actually older than Shohei. So, uh, so maybe yeah. Shohei can show him how to come back, right? Like that's that, right. And that's the thing about Shohei Otani, Johnny, is he is somebody who is... He's just, he's just incredible. He's, he's the modern generation Bo Jackson. Like this guy has proven to do everything that everybody said that he couldn't do. And, right. and I think that what we're going to find is that he's going to prove all of the naysayers wrong again. It'll be interesting when he does, if he does have this surgery or when he does recover, I'll, I'll say that it'll be interesting to see if he'll go back to throwing the splitter because there's some indications and some conversations that that's why he actually stopped throwing it pretty often because of the stress that was on his arm. And last mm. year it was his most devastating pitch, but this year he didn't throw it as often. It's almost like he replaced it with the sweeper, right? Before we wrap up today, um, you mentioned something in the first segment and I want to bring it up again. Okay. The, um, the amount of everyone who is suddenly going, Oh, so Hey, damaged goods. Oh, there goes a hundred million, 200 million off his con. Oh, like this is exactly what you and I were talking about when we say, where were you five years ago when he was going through this process? Yeah. Because while everybody wanted to write him off and immediately throw their hands up, like you're only here for the good times. And this goes back to Ben Verlander. Like you're only going to be here for the good times. That that's like, that's no way to root for people. Like people, people on, on YouTube teased us on the comments and said, you guys could always be Dodger fans. No, because <laughs> number one, no, but yeah. number two, thanks for the invite. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the invite. But Mike, how easy would it be for us to, Oh, go right down the five and, sure. and like, all right, here we are. A successful team, team and a fun. successful we've, franchise. We've always, yeah. We've always loved this team, right? Like we yeah. can't do that. And, and so everybody goes through their tough years. Yep. All teams suffer through this again. We need already to sell the team. We need yeah. all this front office nonsense to go away. We need uh, a whole different version of the front office and Artie Marino to sell this team finally. Yeah. But at the same time, um, I, I, I'm not going to just sit here and pretend that it's all happy times, sunshines and rainbows all the time. Right. Like there's bad times. And, and for Shohei Otani, this sucks. Yeah. But you know what? He's been through it before. Angel fans have been through it before. Where were all of you guys, Yankee fans, Dodger fans, whoever fans, wherever you're coming from, you weren't there before. And yeah. and so we'll continue to root for Otani, whether he's with us next year or not. Yeah. Dodger fans would hate us because we didn't suffer through the nineties with that, those Dodger teams. And so we can't show up now when they're good. Right. And right. this is why we love our locked on everydayers and you're here every day. So thanks for making locked on angels. Your first listen of the day. Remember the angels play the Mets at four ten today, and you can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked on Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Mike, what do we have on deck for Monday's show? Angels are playing the Mets, and so we're hoping that maybe they could turn some things around. We're going to pay attention to see how Noah Shanuel plays and, and how he's hitting, and we'll give you a recap of the weekend games and Shanuel on Monday on Locked on Angels. All right, man. The Angels better give us a good weekend because Please. they have... <laughs> Ground, speaking of grinding people into the ground, they've gri- they've driven their fans into the ground. Yes, so, yeah. Until Monday show, everybody. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.